everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we'll be comparing the Grenadier Trial Master to the Wrangler Rubicon. I think this is the best possible comparison with the new Grenadier. Before we get in this video, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to the Enios Grenadier here in West Valley, Utah, for giving me some time with this Trial Master. This particular one is available for sale. And then I also want to give a huge shout out and thank you to the Lurch Miller Jeep in Sandy for giving me some time with this Wrangler Rubicon. It's also available for sale. So, link to both of their inventories in the description down below. And then on the Grenadier side of things, if you have any questions on the Grenadier or you're looking to order one, uh, just ask for Corey at the Grenadier here in West Valley. Let's get into it. Powering the Wrangler is the 4xE powertrain, so it's a 2 liter turbocharged 4 cylinder that's paired to a hybrid system and an 8 speed automatic transmission. It puts out 375 horsepower and then 470 pound-feet of torque. Now there are a bunch of powertrain options available at the Wrangler. You can get a 6.4 liter V8. 24 is the last model year for that, by the way. Uh, you can also get a 2.0 turbo, non-hybrid, and then you can get a 3.6 liter V6. I think this is the most comparable powertrain to the one in the Ineos. Speaking of Ineos, we have a turbocharged 3 liter inline 6 that goes through an 8 speed automatic transmission. It puts out 282 horsepower and then 332 pound-feet of torque. Before we move forward with this review, I do want to mention, if you want to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. So starting with the Wrangler, it has that classic Jeep look, but there's also some cool utility to it. So this one's got the upgraded steel bumper, so that's ready to take an impact off-road. You can also integrate a winch very easily. The Rubicon comes with cool hood vents there. They're not functional, they're just for looks. But yeah, you've got that minimalist, boxy Wrangler design. Now with the Grenadier, it has a lot of similarities to the old Defender. That's what they're going for with the Grenadier. So you can see even with these here on the hood, just like we see on the Defenders. But you've got the circular light design just like the Wrangler. You have a bumper that can also take some impacts off-road. And interestingly enough, ground clearance is very similar. So uh, the Grenadier is like 10.4 inches. The Wrangler stated to be about like 10.8 inches. Uh, both of them have skid plate protection underneath as well. So although the Wrangler has bigger tires, which you'll see in a second, again, ground clearance, very similar. So let's take a look at those tires. 33s on the Wrangler Rubicon. Whereas with the Grenadier, I think these are like technically 31s. I mean, you guys can kind of see the tread pattern there and everything, but cool steelies there. Whereas we've got the new kind of Jeep style. Now, both of these actually have solid front axles. That's why I feel like this comparison's so good. Got a solid front axle there with the Grenadier as well. And then notice they both have rock rail protection on the side, solid rear axles. But notice the design difference with the side. So like the Wrangler has these huge body painted fender flares, uh, just big fender flares in general. Then you've got like the body itself that's kind of tucked down a little bit more. Whereas the Grenadier, you can see the body, it's still squared off, but the body's larger. And then the fender flares, they're not that uh, large. I mean, they're, they're big fender flares, but compared to the Wrangler, not nearly as big. And I like how they both have the square mirrors. <laughs> and interestingly enough, the Grenadier is a much taller vehicle uh, in terms of the overall body height. So here's your full side view with the Jeep. And then here's your full side view with the Grenadier. Now take a look at the cargo space. First off, the Grenadier, you've got the two kind of doors that's open. It's very interesting. But tons of vertical space here in the Grenadier. And it's also pretty wide in the back as well so just a very spacious cargo area very similar to like a 200 series land cruiser the wrangler it's still got a box design so you can see it still goes up pretty high but you notice that the floor um, is kind of closer to the roof overall because again the body's just a little bit higher and then you have this for the cage there so that kind of gets in the way as well so not nearly as much storage space in the back and the wrangler obviously window and tailgate so a little bit different. So finish things up with the rest of the rear. Even though they're somewhat similar in terms of length, uh, you can see there's a big height difference again with the bodies of the vehicles. Cause I mean, look at the, the bumpers here. I think this really sh illustrates this. You can see the bumpers here in the back. I mean, the Grenadier's bumper's a little bit higher than the Wrangler's, but not that much. 
and then just look at the height difference of the rest of the body. The Grenadier just keeps going. So that's where a lot of that extra space in the Grenadier comes from. And it's funny that the Grenadier makes the Wrangler look like a pipsqueak, even though the Wrangler technically has bigger tires. Now in the back of the Grenadier, legroom here is great. A really tight fit and finish with the material use with the Grenadier and then like such a solid sound at the closing. Uh, this has seat covers from the, seat covers from the factory covers. That's not even a word. Uh, leather seats underneath with this particular one. And then headroom is great. Now in the back of the Jeep, legroom seems relatively uh, similar. There's actually a nice soft touch here on the door. Um, and it's it's pretty tight with the fit and finish. It's pretty solid sound. Not as solid as the Grand here, but still nice. Uh, and this one has the upgraded leather seats here. And then headroom, it's good. And let's start her up. Ooh, such a nice sound. So with the uh, Grenadier, the most important thing, it has the toot function, uh, but really premium looking and feeling steering wheel. And you can see you've got normal practical controls all around. The infotainment system does contain uh, speedometer, all of that RPM, so everything is here in the center. And this one just has a, you can see the camera there, pretty good resolution. And then as for the rest of the infotainment system, um, it's quick to respond for the most part. It does take a second for some of the pages to load up, uh, but it's very self-explanatory uh, in terms of the systems, what everything means. And then it has a bunch of cool stuff. So you can see with the compass, it also shows the elevation. And then a bunch of physical controls here. It's got a very bespoke uh, feel to it. I mean, even like pressing the hazard light button, it, it just has like a unique feel to it. And then this is four wheel drive all the time, but you can also go into four wheel load, also the center locking differential. And then you can see the shifter for the eight speed. Got more physical controls here. You can see with a couple others, actually have a traditional brake. And the center console is very similar to what you'll see in the Jeep actually. But I will say, we'll compare the lids because this feels like just so sturdy how it's put on. Uh, same thing with like everything on the dash. It's hard, you have to like just come and touch it in person to like just tell how sturdy everything feels even the grab handle uh, with this as well a um, bunch of controls up top uh, but since this is a comparison to a rubicon we've got front rear locking differentials with this we have an off-road mode so it's got a lot of off-road stuff similar to the rubicon and 4 by e so it's just going to be electric for the most part but you got the signature jeep steering wheel here you can see you've got like adaptive cruise control You've got Jeep's gauge cluster, and then with the 4 by 8 it'll show you information on the hybrid system. So you can see with normal uh, RPMs there, but then also it shows us our range here, power, all of that. Camera system on this one, you can see the resolution there, front to back, pretty cool. And then as for the infotainment system, uh, similar to the Grenadier where it, you know, it picks up what you're doing, it just sometimes takes a second for some of the pages to pull up. And this is what I'm talking about. Look at, look at the dash on this. See that wiggle? Do you see that? That's what I'm talking about in terms of the difference uh, with the Grenadier where it feels super tight. Um, and you can see the same thing with the grab handle. It's got a little bit of give here in the Jeep. It's not bad though, uh, but yeah. It's got the Jeep glove box. This is what I'm talking about the center console. Look at it, it's very similar. But yeah, the, again, even the lid, it's got a little bit of give. Anyways, we got stuff like dual zone climate, heated seats, all of that. Important stuff, front and rear locking differential. So this doesn't have a center locker, but it does have a two-speed transfer case. And it's got a sway bar disconnect. That's something the Grenadier does not have. And then being a Jeep, you can take the top off. Now, when it comes to pricing, that Wrangler is equipped stickers for about $72,000. The Grenadier stickers for um, $85,000 before some of the accessories. It has the accessories bring it up to about $92,000. And so with that being said, Let's see how they drive. So let's take a look at visibility first in the Wrangler. Get the rest of the rear. And I will mention at the beginning of this comparison, if you guys want me to bring a 392 down to compare, I can. Uh, if you're wanting to see that. Because I understand there is, you know, with the Grenadier like that, that's loaded up like that. It's, it's relatively close to a 392 in terms of MSRP pricing. So, yeah, I thought I'd mention that, but I think 4 by is the most equivalent, like, powertrain-wise. Even though that's not a hybrid, just in terms of how this develops power and everything. Pretty smooth. 
the Wrangler. It'll be interesting to see the difference in the steering because I've, uh, these, they both have solid front axles and I've seen some people have kind of already compared the steering on them, but I'd like to see for myself. Yeah, good power out of the 4xE. One thing with plug-in hybrids is sometimes they can, you know, not necessarily feel as powerful as they are on paper just because the, there's a little bit of, there can be kind of like a disconnect if that makes sense between the hybrid side of things and the gas, or the, like, sorry, the electric side of things and the gas side of things. Sometimes it's hard to truly be a hybrid, if that makes sense. But... Yeah, it's, it's a nice drive. It's definitely a nice drive. Uh, you know, not an insane amount of wind noise. The top insulation helps out and the new windshield design and then there's more insulation everywhere else. That, all, that does definitely uh, help out a bit. We'll just use this to turn around, I suppose. Yeah, so that does help out. Oh, this little pond. Must be like a spring there. So it's interesting to see those in the middle of Utah. Yeah, such an interesting powertrain. You will see for solid front axle steering, it's not bad. And again, the power is good, but you can see there's still a little bit of vagueness with the steering. So it drives like a Jeep, it drives like a Wrangler. Um, it's, you know, modern Wranglers are not, they're not bad. Uh, they're pretty comfortable when it comes to the seat comfort and the ride quality and all that. It's, it's a lot better than it used to be. I mean, I, you know, it's, I still wouldn't call this like the best daily driver on the planet, but it's definitely for a Wrangler. It's, it's definitely daily drivable, a lot more daily drivable than it used to be. Let's pop into the Grenadier. visibility in the Grenadier. It's similar to the Wrangler. I mean, the windows are a bit uh, like longer, it seems like. Yeah, it's interesting because like, again, the over you look at the overall vehicle length and it's, it's pretty similar, but the Grenadier just feels like a larger vehicle. Uh, overall, we're gonna skip this back just a little bit. So, yeah, right off the bat, I mean, the Grenadier steering compared to the Wranglers, it's, it's way lighter. It's so interesting. Yeah, there's definitely a, a lot more steering input to get the wheels to turn on this, which, again, off-road, that's what you want. It can just feel a little bit strange on-road at first, but... bad you know this doesn't have nearly as much power torque as the jeep but how it delivers the power i think it feels a lot more natural so with the wrangler here's what it feels like is you get kind of like an instant push on the electric side of things and then it takes a second for that little two liter turbo to spool up once it spools up you get like a second push this on the other hand it's just like boom torque pretty straightforward it's nice Now, when it comes to noise insulation, the cabin's a lot better. It's doing the thing that everyone's talked about, the clicky thing. Um, anyways, the the cabin's a lot better, but what I will say is the this has like the roof rack and everything that does create some like, you can hear it up top. That's every roof rack ever. Uh, that's like one reason like on my Land Cruiser, I took off the uh, roof basket that comes with the Heritage because I'm not using it right now and it just makes makes uh, for some wind buffeting. So there is that. But when it comes to the ride quality difference, this doesn't, uh, so I wouldn't say that one is necessarily more comfortable than the other. This feels really good over bumps. I would say that this does a better job than the Wrangler over bumps. On smooth pavement, 
pr somewhat similar. The Wrangler's more kind of wishy-washy side to side. This, it feels more planted. Which is, it's funny because the steering in this is very light. So like the steering in the Grenadier is kind of more side to side, whereas the body of the Wrangler is more side to side. So it's just, just choose your side to side. I know the same thing when I did the Bronco comparison. Yeah, the torque with this is so good. It really doesn't feel like, again, you hear the power figures, big heavy SUV, sub 300 horsepower. You think it's gonna be, um, I don't know, you think it's gonna be quick, but it feels feels adequately powerful. But th this B58 powertrain from BMW has always been that way. So yeah, to sum things up, Grenadier compared to Wrangler, here's, here's, what, it's, here's what it looks like. This is essentially the same compared to the Rubicon when it comes to off-road capability, ground, like all of that's basically the same. So this is like a Rubicon, but it's, I would say more comfortable with like the seats, the interior is more spacious, it's got more cargo room and it feels more solid, better built. Like this doesn't wiggle like on the Jeep dash. So it just, it just feels like a much more solid vehicle. It's kind of like a Rubicon had a baby with a G-Wagon. That's, that's almost what the Grenadier is like in a way. But let me know if you would go uh, Wrangler or if you'd go Grenadier.